Hello, beautiful people of the world. This is the first time we're seeing you and you're seeing us. Wait, we're not seeing you. You're seeing us. I see everyone yeah. at all times. I don't know what you're talking about. Strangely entertaining is a home. creeper. Um, <laughs> that's what he's doing. He's a creeper, <laughs> creepy, make creepster. So that's why he sees everybody. Um, but today, besides it being our first video podcast, hopefully this is still in video format when it goes out, we are doing anime osts how are you gentlemen doing today yes I am yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i'm strangely hi, entertaining I'm hello hi hi um, and i'm kaiju kels yes and oh, he's oh, retiring oh. after this podcast what he's doing <laughs> yeah. um yep so yeah um let's get into it though uh first you know, I guess I gotta introduce you guys, but we can see you now. So, well, we already just introduced ourselves. We don't need to. Do I know. That. I'm nervous. Oh, dog. Yeah. Strangely entertaining, Kaiju Kells and Static Dreads, of course. No, other way. That way. Okay, We're listen. All However, <laughs> I see y'all is <laughs> fix it in post. Fuck. Um, yeah, I'm black. <laughs> in case y'all didn't notice, I anime o- anime OSTs, the okay. composers behind a lot of your favorite anime. That's what we're talking about today. Who yes. made what music? Yeah. So first of all, we got to get into what is an OST because a lot of people don't know what an OST is. But stands for original soundtrack. Um, what? This is not just limited to anime. I believe cartoons and other things have OSTs as well. Correct. Sure. Yes. It stands for original soundtrack. So anything with an original soundtrack, I would assume, has an OST. Yes. Cool. Cool. My mixtape has an OST that I'm dropping soon. Um, My cat has an OST as well. Honestly, I'm curious. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, um it depends on where you're coming from and really the terminology. Uh but yeah, uh whether or not you'll see the word OST or you'll just see soundtrack, kind of a regional thing, but certainly the exact same thing. You want to yeah. see the Frozen OST? We're going to call you a weeaboo as we jam out to it too. Yes, Into the Unknown is a notable banger and that is the only Frozen song that is a notable banger. Um yeah. So let's basically, let's basically get into it. So would you gentlemen say that OSTs are important to anime? Like, can you have an anime without OSTs? Uh, if you're talking about without music, I mean, no, because that's part of the, um, it's part of anime. I mean, even when not. silent movies were a thing, you had somebody playing, playing the on piano. the piano. Oh. Do, 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 Kinda, uh, you kind of need it. It's non-negotiable when it comes to entertainment. No, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, and certainly, it can either enhance what you're what you're seeing and the moment and emotions they're trying to convey, or it can totally ruin the entire vibe. <laughs> If you want to watch an anime with no music, just go read a manga. <laughs> go listen to A Silent Voice. That that one doesn't have music, right? It's about her being deaf. <laughs> yes, uh, that's the that... only thing it's about. Is that the wrong one? <laughs> no, you're right. I'm just oh. like, if like I took the bare minimum to explain <laughs> something, that would that's what you just did. It's about her being deaf. Yes. <laughs> Does A Silent Voice have an OST? It does indeed. Oh. <laughs> well. Okay. The cool. anime is a lie. Well, I yeah, guess we don't see it from her perspective all the time. So. I mean. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I really need to watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing for that. That, that movie's heavy. It is. It is. I finally watched it because I was already sad from us doing Anohana. So I finally went back and just freaking watched it and... i'm sad i should watch more sad that makes me exactly. feel better so... exactly and then i watched gargoyles yeah, their own yeah because yeah but <clears throat> so like do you think osts are like super important on the like important scale like you have animation you have choreography you have plot you have theme where does ost fall into that importance for you guys like for me I feel like it's like maybe not the it's definitely not the most important thing, but it's definitely in like the top four components you need 
to have a successful it anime. Depends on the, it depends on the show and uh, the overall sound design. Because if you can get away with really good sound design and very little music, like, say, something like Samurai Jack, you just have the opening and then uh, an, the ending theme and the rest of the episode could just be uh, someone messing messing around with good sound design. Yeah, you, you don't really need a whole lot. Uh, yeah. But there are some out there that... Uh, the music makes the entire moment. Like, I don't think uh, Attack on Titan would be anywhere near as renowned as it is without the music. Facts. Like, you had people trying to be German for all of 2013 when that came out, because they were out here trying to butcher, myself included, um, the theme song. Like, we were trying to figure out what was going on, and I can't... Now I can't even pronounce it or remember it. Like, (laughs) it was about something... Like Dova King was somewhere in it, I think. <laughs> I think maybe not probably Skyrim. Thinking of Skyrim. I'm like eighty percent sure it's not, but Dova okay. King. Dova King. <laughs> Can't say you're wrong. Yeah, that was it right there. That was no. then the Titan showed up, a colossal uh, Titan showed up when we hit that final Dova King. That's what I I just do. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I don't even try to say. No, that was that was totally it. Yeah, no, that was like ba da 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 ba ba da da ba ba da. Yes, very much so. so Copyright strike uh, video taken now. Um, <laughs> let's get into some of the composers, starting with, why not, the dude who made the soundtrack for um, Attack on Titan. My boy, Swano. Already? You... Already? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you mean? You said you said the person who did it, and that was Swano. Like, oh, he did it. All right. Of course all he right. did. In the words of Long Beach Griffey, yeah, he did it. Yeah. I mean... I'm with uh, I'm with Static on this one. Swano is I don't literally everything I listen from him is just like just like it's great. I don't know. It's just like it's water to my ears. It's like ah, it's <laughs> water refreshing. To your ears. Yes, it's refreshing. Yeah, um, it's literally like liquid healing. Wait, now you got me think about water. It's not it's like melodic healing because it's just so. It's so good, and the fact that he's done his portfolio yeah, is he huge. Kill like, kill. yeah, he did Kill a Kill, yep. so he did Bangarang or whatever Rukia's theme song. He did that. He did Don't Lose Your Way. He did all these amazing songs. He did eighty six, the last anime we just did a podcast on. That was all him. He did Attack on Titan, of course. He did Seven Deadly Sins. He he's his, the what the repertoire. Is also in the video. You can see right there. The yeah, repertoire but... is like his is Gravity Wall. He did recreators. Gravity Wall is great. yeah. He did recreators. Mm-hmm. Um, this one's for you, uh, Strange. He did Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yes, yes, he, he did. did do that, and it is a beautiful uh, video game OST. You should go take a listen to it. It's great. Yes, he is like. And he did like just so many other music. He just put out an album recently, um, called like Ivy, which is like four or five in Greek numerals. I'm gonna pretend oh. like I remember. Which Roman that numerals. Is. Yeah, Roman I mean, numerals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um it you know what it is. titled four. Yeah, so which is his fourth album. Um and he brings so many artists like Aimer, um, Mizuki, um, Lako. Uh, just so many millet, like so many different. Well, no, he didn't bring millet in, but he brought so many other great artists in from Japan, and he just finds like people who aren't famous as well, and gives them like a name. And he's an amazing piano player. He can play like, every instrument in the band. He's just like literally, he is my like composer upon composers. Like he, so good. I would have to. Say apparently, he's doing Kingdom as well this year. So that's a thing. Didn't know that so, was a thing. <laughs> yeah. There's a new season of Kingdom that just came out that he's doing, so I'm like, okay, that's that's a thing. But, yeah, so we all know I love Swano with my huge heart. Uh, we were some other people that you guys rock with as okay. far as anime composers. I got you. In my my niche of me paying attention to the music that an anime has, 
Um, certainly, we watch a lot of long running shows. So having a suite of music that can kind of set the tone but are also bangers is pretty crucial. And one of those composers that really does that is, here we go, uh, Yasuharu uh, Ta- Takanashi. We're going to go with that. Um, Takanashi composed for the shows like Naruto, Gantz, uh, Naruto Shippuden, Iki Tosin, of course. Um, this one's for you, Kai. Beyblade G Revolution. Yes, the goat. Like, the second goat, of course. But like uh, A bunch of precures. My God, so many precures. That's how you found it, wasn't it? <laughs> Went and Maybe. looked up the precures. Log Horizon. <laughs> um... Uh, Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3. Okay. Uh, for you culture gentlemen, uh, The Testament of New Sis- uh, Sisters New Devil. I'll watch that. I ain't gonna be in front. Like, <laughs> I was and like... Record of Ragnarok. The... That was like... Yes. Record of Ragnarok was one of those where the OST was important. Because like, mm-hmm. that... Like, some of those lines would have fallen so flat if it wasn't for the music in the background. Especially the dude who was like, I killed myself a thousand times. It's the, it's the kind of thing where you wish the music was for a better anime. <laughs> yes, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, a hundred percent. Like, a hundred percent. So, Zog or Kells, who wants to go next? Tell us about your anime composer in class today at Show and Tell. <laughs> You must now come forward and present your composers. Okay. Uh, I got a couple lined up here. Uh, although one I do really want to talk about because it kind of surprised me. Uh, I mean, just, I'm probably going to butcher these names. Apologies in advance. Uh, Shiro Sagetsu. Sagetsu? What do you The do? guy who did Bleach. <laughs> oh, and, and I can't, also, oh my gosh. And, I can't believe I forgot yeah. that. But the thing that actually kind of surprised me about it too, that he also did Neon Genesis Evangelion. Of course, yes, I did yeah, know in, that in 1995. <laughs> I did not know that at all until I was researching this. You know, he but, also did another one of your favorites. Yeah, the Golden Orc of Berserk. <laughs> Some of the best like um, choir kind of music I've seen in anime. This guy's the composer for it. I'm a sucker for choir music for some reason, especially in anime. Not these choirs. <laughs> like, well, no, you, no, no, no. Like, I mean, no, I'll still be like, whoa, this is great. Yeah, it. What's also weird is, have you ever seen Ranma One Half? Yes. <laughs> the same guy. He, he was in a better mood that day. <laughs> the arrangement for the third opening song. How wild. Yeah. The wild oh. thing to me is that, like, to do Evangelion and then, like, because Evangelion soundtrack still hold like, we just rewatched that, like, me and Kells on our other podcast, and that music still, like, even after watching it two or three times, still gives you that, like, air of, like, of just pain. <laughs> like, yeah, good man. pain. And and he also did uh, Black Bullet in 2014 and SSSS Gridman. SSSS Gridman was good. <sighs> I gotta finish it. You ain't gonna finish it. Everybody got to start it, it now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Zog. I didn't know you were gonna start it. <laughs> this is one of those wild things where, like, in in a lot of the things we deal with or the people we look at, it, it really comes down to oh, uh, here is the creator of this show, and he's also made, like, four other uh, four other products, you know. We've got, oh, my God, Takeshi? Not Takeshi. Who did, uh, who did Yugu Hakusho again? Oh, Tagashi? Tagashi. I thought you were trying to say Takashi 6 9 I was like, we know that. No. I was here. like, uh... No, T- Tagashi. Um, you know he's got Yu Yakusho. He's got Hunter Hunter. He's got Level E, the best Tagashi show ever made. Um, clearly that's why he stopped working on anything else. Um, mm-hmm. but like, 
looking at these composers, they have such a long career in music with such a variety of of genres that they're writing music for. And it is it is wild to see you know 10, 20, 25, 30 different shows with this yeah. person's name on it. Like they have touched this much media. It's it's kind of wild. Yeah. That that one completely blew my mind, Bashiro. I was expect I expect more things like um uh, um Shoji Magoro. Yeah. Magoro, whatever. He does all of the Persona series. So every time they revamp they have a new sound, new track for a game, new uh basically a re release of their previous game, just the definitive version of it. Like uh, Persona Five, Persona Five Royal and whatever. He's the guy doing every one of those tracks. Oh. So does and he also do he, the Shimigami Tencents? I believe he does, yes. Did you say Tencents? Shimigami Tensei. Thank you. Shut up, Strange. <laughs> Only yeah. if you're not on discount, man. The Shimigami <laughs> Tencents. <laughs> yeah, Strange. you look at what? you look at his whole uh, list, and it's nothing but Atlas <laughs> and Persona Shin Megami Tensei uh, all the way down. You asking for uh, my favorite composer? Yes. You definitely ask for your favorite composer. I did my same. Swano, what do you mean? You didn't say it though. Yes, <laughs> like, I did. <laughs> I said me too. I agree with this man over <laughs> here. Doesn't... That's not a whole thing. <laughs> it's not a thing. <sighs> I don't know what else to say. You said everything. It's say just... someone different. No, I don't have Jeez, anyone my. different. Swano yes. from two years ago. Boom. I'm... He's a different man today. I literally, you literally said before the podcast, I'm gonna do fairy tale. I was like, okay, here's all the fairy tale. Okay, for yeah, fairy tale is like one of my favorite like entire OSTs. Not my favorite composer. Fairy tale is not a composer. Oh yeah, well sorry, yeah. I mean, he has he composed your favorite anyway. Anyway, some other notable composers that I just wanted to give <laughs> shout out to Hold are. On. I can't read that. It's too small. I'm blind and I'm old. <laughs> Get glasses like Yashu, the other two Yashuharu Takanashi. I like him besides Swano because he made the fairy tale soundtrack. There, are you appeased, <laughs> sir? I will now eat this cookie in protest. I don't know about appeased, but I'm entertained. <laughs> that cookie looked like a muffin. No Dude, cap. Very crumbly. All right. Yeah. I hope you mouth dries out. You ain't got no water at your house. This is the last, like, he's eating a cookie on recording. I'm going to have a conniption. So before I do that, let's talk hey, about... other people have eaten on the podcast. Just like, You're you? right, but not while speaking. Jesus. All right. Um, <laughs> giving everyone time, I'm going to go off on a spiel about another uh, wonderful composer that is really near and dear to my heart. Um, and I'm certain that all of you know at least some kind of music that he's made. Uh, this being Takanori Arisawa. Now, uh, unfortunately, he's uh, he's passed in 2005, so we won't get more Arisawa music. Uh, but the shows that he's composed for, composed and arranged for, is the OG Sailor Moon anime, Digimon Season 1 through 4. Oh, um and a bunch oh, yeah. of other stuff like Sesame Street the Japanese version. <laughs> Rest in peace, King. Uh, I, uh I don't What a G. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> But but no, totally. Like the, in my mind, every single song from an episode so to Sailor Moon, because it's totally monster of the week. You got yeah. the same exact soundtrack. And they play a song to fit the scene to get you to feel a certain type of way. And every single one of those songs is, one, a banger, and two, makes you feel a type of way. And um, I, they are so near and dear to my heart. Just like every song in like at least Digimon Adventure 1. Um, which, you know what? I do not know if I've ever heard them because... 
I don't the... know if the dub uses the same score. Right. That's so, I, yeah, I just thought about they, that. They, they, some things, but mostly no. Um, because yeah. I went back and watched it, and the sat the biggest tragedy. Don't get me wrong. The Digimon intro as kids from four kids was great for us. It's, it's still great. What do you mean? But <laughs> it is, and it's still great. Yes, but we missed out on Butterfly. Luckily, yeah, I was cultured enough to go back and find Butterfly when I started being weeaboo. I was like. What if I watched Pokemon and Digimon in the native language? It was a culture shock. Not gonna lie. But the OST and stuff was great. And we really got hoed by not having Butterfly. And the other song for Season 2, which I don't remember because it was Season 2, but it was also decent. But Butterfly and... What was the other one, Zog? I know you know it. Um, uh, Braveheart? Yes. Okay. Yes, we were hoed because we didn't get Butterfly and Braveheart. But, but I mean, now still, I totally, I, I totally love, the, like, nostalgia-wise, and it's pretty, it's fun. It's not good, but certainly all of the OG Digimon like dub soundtrack is fun. Okay. No, it's great. Digimon, like, hate Digimon. <laughs> champions to the boys and girls. And you know what? Digimon, uh, kind of. I mean, this is just the way I feel. I've actually, I actually have the uh, Digimon movie soundtrack saved on. As you should. My wife's you phone's a, like you music got a little playlist. Nineties, you got a little nineties uh, time capsule there. We started listening to it. She was not about it. She yeah, was no, not about I'm it at out. all. No, but I'm like, you don't understand. Say the same thing I'm saying. Don't understand. I'm gonna say the same thing I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm mad you opened with. Yeah, I got the Digimon movie soundtrack on my wife's phone. <laughs> that killed me. That Not killed even me. my phone. <laughs> I was like, this man. This man said. <laughs> oh my gosh. He said, she Not me. I, I'm a professional. Look, when you're, when you're, look, when you have a wife who likes to travel and we're trapped in the car for hours at a time. <laughs> Trapped in the car, and thank God, not your car. I guess yeah. that's yeah. the real answer. No, not my car. No, my car has no air conditioning. They would literally be trapped in his car. Like they would not be able to get out. It's like, truth. He speaks the truth. doors would Just break like, the windows. He'd be, he'd be on like freaking in some American windows out. The super interstate that goes like ninety miles an hour, and we'd be trapped in the car, can't get out. We just have to go. Hey, he'd. He'd be trying to bust the windows out to the Digimon red. Like, oh, did you? What was on the beat? <laughs> uh, what a, what a We're world. the kids but, of America. Whoa. Uh, but, oh my God. but by virtue of it being Digimon, I'm going to attribute all of those songs from the dub to the OG Takanori Arisawa, even if he didn't write them. Yes. Because totally, he totally wrote them. Kids in America, though. That was That's oh, canon. Yes. He wrote Kids in America, not, That's not canon the original song that came out in the 70s. It was him. He got a time machine, went back. You just didn't know. He didn't also know wrote All time. Star by Smash Mouth. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Smash Mouth. Um, another week Bare Naked Ladies. Oh, no, this is like, what's that one movie with the guy who like travel slips into another dimension where the Beatles don't exist and he just becomes famous by... No one watched that. Everyone saw the trailer, but no one watched the actual movie. I know. Movie. I can't I don't, I don't remember what the movie existed. was, though. I forgot that existed. That's exactly I'm mad that everybody happened. knows that from the trailer, but no one knows what it's actually called. Everyone's like, You're, yeah, that you one watched movie it, with Ed Sheeran and the it's like guy. Yesterday? Isn't it yesterday? Yeah, probably. You could say it was in. You could have said Sally goes to the beach, and I'm like, yeah, Sally goes to the beach. It was happening. This is a warm gun. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> wait, Static, did you watch Another it though? I know you watched it. I didn't watch it. it. Uh huh. Yeah, you no, did. I, the look no, I really your face everything. No, I, it was real life. I don't watch real life things. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Except if it's not animated, I'm right. not interested. <laughs> I'm a huge weeb. All right, what's next on the list? <laughs> <laughs> so well, what's next on the list we've derailed i do gotta give like two shout outs though before oh, no. we leave though this set not that we're leaving we're still here unfortunately Bye. for you people are still Good night, everyone <laughs> walk away Sayonara. it'll be the last time you cast <laughs> but okay shout out to which okay his name is gonna again i'm sorry taku it will wash a washiki mm-hmm, yeah that guy 
<laughs> yeah, he did Gurren Lagann, A Comic of Kill, Noragami, Soul Eater, and oh, JoJo's Bazaar. Like, so Taku Iwasaki is a a real one. Yeah, like... Agreed. And his stuff is so, like... the thing. His stuff is, like, so, like, diverse. Because Gurren Lagann is so far from Noragami, which is so far from... You know, JoJo's Bizarre, everything's far from JoJo's Bizarre right. Adventure. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like a huge <laughs> difference. And that versatility, so dope. Also. And, and the hooks. The hooks. You look at every JoJo song, like at least the main theme from every season, and you know that shit by heart. You're just like, dun 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 dun. Like, anytime uh, that hits, you're like, oh, Jodo Robot. Fuck these guys! Oh, yes, yeah, bro. Over the so Ura we, Ura theme. Egypt are on the way. <laughs> Doesn't what is, matter. <laughs> what is it called? It's not the Ura Ura, but like the consecutive punches. Um, is it the Ura? Like, Ura, 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 Ura Ura Yeah, that theme. It, it depends on which one we're talking about, but yeah. But that theme, like even in the trailer for Stone Ocean, which when it happened in that mm. OST, I was like. December, man. December gonna be a lit ride. Like, I'm here for it. Also, we're gonna get burnt at the stake if we don't man mention these other two composers. Yuki, <laughs> Kara, Kajura. I'm sorry. Um, she did Demon Slayer. She did Sword Art Online, Fate Zero, and Madoka okay. Magica. Like, well, and, I think I have and watched Dot all of those. I know yes. that. She she is dot hack. Yeah, she did dot hack. Oh, I I don't hold on. Allow me to do quick (laughs) Googling, Um, which is is absolutely wild um, because dot hack is such a unique. Yep. Dot hack sign right there. It's all connected. The the OVAs from the uh, attached PS2 games. Um, One, it's wild that she did both dot hack and SAO. Yes. Yeah. But um no, totally. Like the dot hack OST is incredibly like vibe fitting. It fits the fantasy medieval MMO vibe, like on the nose. And you've got like three tracks that just stick out in your mind like, oh yeah, that's the one. But you can listen to the whole soundtrack on loop and go it was all different, but all kind of the same. And I felt like I was on an adventure. No, 100%. And, man, super shout out to um, I'm, her I'm, doing I'm, Demon Slayer. Because, like, the sounds I'm, in Demon Slayer, like the, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like the, yeah, yeah. That one? Sure. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. I'm actually kind of surprised you didn't uh, mention that she does uh, Heaven's Feel, all three movies. Oh, I said the Fates universe, yeah, uh, but like, but specifically the Heaven's Feel movies, like those, man, those. I want to give her a hug for those. Like, honestly, <laughs> like I respect your personal boundaries. It is COVID. A lot's going on in the world. <laughs> I was like, uh... like when everything cools down, and if we ever meet, like at a Starbucks or like a Seven Eleven, because there's a lot of Seven Elevens in Japan. Like, we gotta hug it out because thank you. And like I appreciate you and yeah. Um yeah. And Yono Kano's Cowboy Bebop, um Zenga No Terror, uh just a whole bunch of stuff. Ghost and Shell Space Dandy. Space Dandy, all the classics. Like she gave us tank. She gave us tank. Like she did not give us tank. She was there for Tank. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tank was by the seatbelts, but you know the, the openings and closings, um, unless originally written, are often kind of They're songs often from like outside uh, yeah. music producers, like bands yeah. and stuff. She was involved in the making of Tank, though. She helped make the decision to put Tank in yeah. the show. Yes, I yeah. agree. Thank you. Thank you for bringing us Tank. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you, Queen. The world would not be the same without the tank. Yes, or Swan, I'll hear you. Okay, so <laughs> next, I gotta ask you guys. Uh-oh. Nope. Are series made better by their OSTs? Like, do you think an OST has just carried a series 
to be better than it actually is. You cannot so, convince me Attack on Titan is as good as it is if it wasn't for the music, so I kind of have to say yes. I mean, Swato, like, I watched 86 just because Swato was on it, and it just coincidentally happened to be a banger. So I am in favor of it depend. yes, like, not even it depends. If Swano's on something, I'm going to watch it. That's just me personally. The way I look at it is the music kind of helps enhance whatever the anime is so like it's just like extra extra f- spice or icing on the cake if you will because like you need a story i mean you don't have to i guess you could make it garbage or whatever and then you need sign exists so. you need good art you know and then like you just top it off with some music and the music really can bring out emotions because music is also a universal language. So there's no language barrier to music itself. Cause I listen to like, uh, you know, of course, Japanese music. I mean, not like exclusively or anything, but you hear like a piece of, yeah. Or like a, a good example. Not that I want to bring it up is Gangnam style. It's in Korean yet. It caught on here. So music is, yeah. Music is universal. So like it can only enhance whatever the heck it's it's put in. Anyways, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what was the answer to that question? The answer to that was <laughs> that was the most political answer I've ever heard. It's not political. <laughs> like anybody said. I said well, OSTs can enhance. So that is my official take. So in essence, yes, it can make or break <laughs> an anime. Thank you. We got okay. to the answer. <laughs> Run for governor. That. I'm running Please. for president next year. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's going to be better Go into. for that. Uh, <laughs> he's working on it. <laughs> uh, he's already on the Do not worry, everyone. I have been filled with the nano machines. I believe. <laughs> now, totally tangential question that is not on the list, but it's kind of... Um, yeah. <laughs> Anime. When you get to a particular part in either an episode or a season and they play the intro or the outro, they play the opening or ending within the episode, what is your opinion on like that practice? Those are the hypest moments ever (laughs) because it it stands out because you're used to hearing those at the A beginning or ending and then all of a sudden it just plays in the middle of an episode so you're just like you're wide-eyed like what's about to happen yeah. especially if it's like a shonen battle series oh god it's a real shonen easy way to, to just that. immediately get get you hyped for the fight mm-hmm. my that mind said it depends on the setting that you're using it for because as much as i uh lo- love love uh, ichigo's theme and every time that guitar riff comes in and it immediately gets me hyped. If you put that at the opening for the show, it, I like it, but it's not going to be anywhere near as impactful. Man, I love... Why I forget what the title of it is. It's like either number, number one. one. Yes. Yeah, number one. It's number Rolling one. Star? Oh, wait, <laughs> every no. time that hits, I'm like, this is mildly the most kind of jank r&b rock and roll song i've ever heard produced but my god am i here for it it's like guitar it's like fake guitar and like i don't know it's why, so wonderful why is that exactly my first reaction when i was watching the very first episode of bleach and that song came out i was just like <laughs> What am I listening to? It's amazing. It's early, I love it. It's early 2000s. <laughs> yeah. Man, like, for me, when Black Rover played inside of Black Clover, mm. like, it was the episode when they were, like, in the town hall and, like, Fugoli and all that stuff. And, like, Black Rover started playing. I was like, yo. Like, and it's, like Black Clover, I feel like it's the most recent one. I feel like does it. I can't recall any other shows that I've watched where they played the intro in the anime. I don't think they've like, done it in My Hero yet, have they? No, like... Okay. Well, they did Peace Sign once. No, they have it. No, they have it. For me... I don't remember. And there's a bunch of anime that will, like, change their 
opening theme like every 12 episodes or something like that. Yeah. Well, so it can be a little tricky to actually pull something like that off. For me, it's jo- Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's uh, JoJo's part three. When they play the. Uh, part three is cut up into two seasons. When they play seasons one intro in season two, it's like, oh shit, we. I yeah. forgot about this song. We brought it back. <laughs> okay. I know what you mean. Because the last episode of Black Clover. When they were going through like the whole thing, and then they played the first intro, I was out of my chair, bro. I was hype. And then they did they did that in Fruits Baskets too. In the final episode of Fruits Baskets, they played the first intro at the end, but they didn't play the like m- like word version. They played the like instrumental, the yeah. like with the cat part. I was like, like I was man, I was so excited. I was like a chicken that was dying, like. I don't know why I use that analogy, but very, that's... Uh, <laughs> but it's in some of the shit I've had coming in your uh... mouth recently. It was less that's... colorful than like your adventures. I think you need to step up your analogies. I do. I was like a wolf who howled at the moon for the first time and then realized my existential crisis. That you're not and a wolf. Away from like Yoshi. <laughs> yes, but it was so good. Like I love, I love to answer your question. I love that. Like that is the thing. If you want to hype me up, like. Do that and then say the title of the anime in it. Like, no, like, <laughs> like when Deku was like, This is my hero academia, and I was like, You right, Deku, <laughs> it is your hero academia. <laughs> yes, sure, like, is. you, you go cry, literally, your story <laughs> right now. Oh, in Tokyo Revengers, watch Tokyo Revengers because Tokyo Revengers did that too, and I was like, Let's go. So are there any anime known just for the OST? Like, I feel like one anime that like is specifically known for the OST is <laughs> is Angel Beats. Thank you. I was just like, I was, I was trying uh, to yes, the, mu- the one musical anime that uh, is most pop, maybe most popular. I don't know. Now, yes. Now, my question for you is: Is it most known for its score for its OST, or is it most known for its opening? Yeah. Isn't My Beats My Soul also a score as well, or is it just an opening? Well, I think that since we already have an like an it's opening con- is a separate portion of the episode. It's the like iconic stamp for mm-hmm. the show. So certainly like is a thing, but it's not oftentimes composed by the composer, the the scorer for the show overall. The ambient music and certainly when the op- the opening gets used in the episode, certainly. Um and it will be on the OST, but oftentimes you think you don't when you go to the OST, when you're starting to look at all of the 17 songs you don't remember the names of because you never heard them. Yeah. Um, you heard the songs, you didn't hear the names. You always yeah. think about the opening. You always think about the closing because those are the two songs that are like the, this is what the show is about, stamp. No facts. Like, and you they're usually that. the first two things on the soundtrack. Which yep. are bomb as hell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Angel Beats opening is so yeah, incredibly iconic. But yeah, I'll be like, real with you, I don't know if I recall any other songs that yeah. kind of stick out. Now, yeah, totally. Except for maybe uh, that guitarist, uh, her specific song. Yes, but that that was an entire episode to itself, so it sticks out for many reasons. Now, in total tangential passing of this exact same idea. If they use the the melodic theme of the intro, right? So you've got this intro, bum, 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 and you know it goes on from there. If they use that kind of motif throughout the show in the composer's original score, totally, totally tying it all together oh, yeah. cohesively with the opening, using the totally. light motifs all throughout. But I haven't been paying attention enough to like really tell you an example of that fair that's fair another one like that i feel like is i mean zog already said it like attack on titan like the first season like i feel like was carried 
by the OST. Like, because the music, yeah, you had, like, the whole gore and everything, of course, an interesting plot, but, like, that intro song, which name I can't remember, um, <laughs> like, but like, Swano killed it. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, but Swano killed it. And Samurai Shampoo is another one that we just did oh. yesterday. Like, I feel like that one is also known for New Jabez. Again, I forgot to mention you doing anime composers. I'm sorry. Love you, New Jabez. But, like, New No. Um, so, totally. Samurai Shampoo uh, score being all manner of hip hop producers. And, and the, the, com- the influence of, like, traditional Japanese music in hip hop is like an excellent exploration of uh the way that music transcends uh and being the score of a samurai anime it's that shit there's a very loud truck right outside my window and i'm very upset <laughs> nice i mean um, i do, can hear it uh stranger or Zog, do y'all have anyone else or any other shows that stick out in your mind where like the whole music thing sticks out as like a vital part that improves your experience or like something you took note of you love uh, the music of this show go ahead zock he's thinking uh, <laughs> oh he's thinking yeah i'm just thinking <laughs> oh okay. uh honestly the only thing that really comes to my mind um uh, now is uh it doesn't really it didn't really uh enhance uh my like experience watching the show but that's probably because they used the track so many freaking times by the third time i was like well this well i'm done <laughs> i'd rather just mute this and watch the animation uh and that's the naruto soundtrack <laughs> the by the third time the super sad uh Our let's make cry music starts happening i'm oh, just like no. i i can't <laughs> i can't care anymore uh, you and I are on opposite ends of the spectrum because, like, the reliability of like those sounds to tell me where I am in an episode are so crucial. Because I'm like, oh no, it's time to be told about the sad backstory where Ninja World life sucks and like life for me is sucks. My parents are dead, and I gotta go kill my parents because they're already dead. Um, so we're gonna play this tragic flute music. Um, I I need that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> What plot point was that? Um, like, sounds like uh, most of Naruto to me. <laughs> right. I was with um, you. It's, it's, the, next, it's the next retcon. <laughs> it was a combination of uh, Haku slash uh, Itachi. Haku slash Itachi, Itachi slash Pain. I don't know, man. There's probably a um, sigh in there. Who knows? Tenjin, Sadness and yeah. Sorrow um, is pretty much the greatest sad song ever played. Man. Um, you got one, Kai? Yeah, like, Kill the Kill. The first time I watched Kill the Kill, I literally heard um, the intro, and then I heard, like, before my body is dry, I was like, wait. And I literally, like, went back, listened to it before my body is dry, like, four more times. Then I heard Bloom Krantz, or whatever, and I was like, Bloom and okay. Krantz. Bloom and Krantz, yeah. And I was like, okay. And I heard "Suck Your Blood." I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just go. And that's how. That's actually was the first OST I listened to by itself. I was like, what is happening? It's a good right OST. Now? Like, like, right. like the the Battle of the Bands music is mm-hmm. top notch. Just like the way they incorporate like high school like instruments. You know what I mean? It, it's it's pretty good. I'm like, sounds like a high school band's doing a big old anime fight. It's great. And like, I, uh... I got I got an anime for you that I know you love the soundtrack for. You're gonna say bo 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 bo, aren't you? No, Vampire Nights. Fuck uh, no. Not... <laughs> <laughs> I got good. I, I hate again, it again. I another an, another uh, example of the OP being like the only thing you remember. Oh, yes. from music. That and um, then like the. I feel like my problem with that was there was no music. Like that was one where OST needs to be in it because like. You just have these intense stare down moments and just be quiet. Just be like, Yuki, I love you, but I'm your sister. And he's like, It's okay. You're also my wife. And I'm like, What? 
Why is this not more dramatic? Like, where, where's the music at? <laughs> and then the dad's like, I gotta kill both of them. Yeah, it was, man. Oh, God, that. Shout out to Studio Trigger, though, for always having great OSTs and not being vampire. Not... Like, Darling in the Franks, <laughs> as an example, is the only good thing past, like, uh... Darling in the Franks, literally. Like, up to episode 16, I was with you. And then it was trash, but like <laughs> literally, like sixteen to twenty four, I still watch because the OST. And then they hold me because they put like a final like variation of a song in the last episode, and everybody was talking about it. So I had to go watch that hoe because they wouldn't put out the OST for like six months. So I had to go watch it. It was when she became a spaceship. Yeah. Bro, tr- Trigger needs to calm down. Yeah, they do. Uh... Like, I'm a spaceship dinosaur, and your blood gives me strength. Facts. All right. Speaking of extra, extra weird, I got one that I paranormal have... agent. <laughs> How hey, did though. you know? <laughs> hey. Um. But no. Uh. Basically. But but. Also, talk about aliens. Let's talk about giant aliens. Um. Megas oh. XLR. No, I no. think I know what he's about to bring up. What Sorry, am I? I'll, I'll be, what, what am I gonna bring up? Tell me. Cross. No, my. The, what Look, great weird just... show that we're gonna do a whole thing on. No, I mean, he's Cooley. Cooley. Okay, lacrosse. yeah. Thought... The the sport lacrosse. No, no M A C Macross. 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 Mo Macross. We're not talking about macross right now. We're oh talking about Cooley Cooley. Yes, yeah. Cooley Cooley. The pillows. Please proceed. Ah, yeah, like... Cooley Cooley. Yes. Ah, I am. I know of this. Continue. Fucking. Okay. Why? Why did I waste my money on this podcast? <laughs> um, so it's a it's a combined effort, like all of Fully Cooly. Fully Cooly's six episodes of weird slice of life alien rock and roll gynax doing weird shit because they are on the way out and want to have fun. Um, tag nice. teaming Shin uh, Shinkichi meets Sumune and the Pillows, the kind of garage rock Japanese band. Um, producing a soundtrack for Fooly Cooly, and every track in this album is a banger. And I love the fact that you know, ten some odd years later, they brought the pillows back to do music for Fooly Cooly Progressive and Fooly Cooly uh, Alternative. Now I haven't seen those, but I have listened, of course, to the pillows because I'm fucking mm-hmm. weeaboo. Um, and I love the tracks from Fool on Cool Generation that are in the two new Fooly Coolies. Well, yeah, like I haven't heard them, but the OG Fooly Cooly, um, OST with the pillows was like phenomenal. And it was like one of those things where it was like an album itself, kind of like the Black Panther movie, like how the OST was just like a whole album. And I was like, yeah, okay. And that's really what I got from Fully Cooly as well. Like, it was really a cool vibe. Um, I feel like that also was the case with... Um, uh, why is my brain spazzing like this? Um, I don't know what you're I thinking about, tell you. but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you a real softball here. Okay. Sound euphonium. Yes. That was... I can finally do that. Um, sound euphonium <laughs> was so good. Like... And the fact that it was close to home, like, and the fact that they composed real music for that, I was like, okay, let's go. And, but I was thinking, what I was thinking of was Shield Hero, um, Rising mm-hmm. of the Shield Hero, because, like, literally, Okami and that whole, like, it's just like a jazz album. Like, like, Okami is the one that plays when, um, Glass, it's like, no, that's the Glass song. Um, but there's, I forget exactly what's happening. Oh, no. Okami is when all the birds, like the Queen Philo, comes oh, in. Philo Isles or Philo Files or something like that. Yeah, the Philo Files or whatever. Strange. I, I can't remember. It, it was Strange is the one who said it. Literally just to be known, finished watching it again with Philo Files. What's dog say? Like, yeah. Yes. When they like come running in the forest and there's the giant one, that's the song. Okami, that's like the, the saxophone, like jazz, where it's like, you know what I'm talking about? Like... <laughs> No? Okay. Look Sounded like a didgeridoo, you mean? But it's literally like, oh god, is the name in translation. But 
No, oh. that one was good. And I don't know if you guys have watched Land of the Lustrous, which you totally a hundred percent should. One of the best modern OSTs in my opinion. Um, shout out to you, Zog, for being cultured. The other two. I literally just it. said I watched it. You, oh, you, sorry. You never, you never <laughs> listen to me anymore. I really did not. I was like, this man ate a cookie. I ain't listening to him. I'll but, do it again. Hey, what strange, about? have you watched Land of the Rust Lustrous? Yet? Yes, I have. Oh, it's shit. like anime Steven Universe. No, you take that back right now. <laughs> Right now, that is almost borderline prejudice because the only thing they have in common is gyms. You owe Bort an apology. You have. <laughs> oh my God. I don't come to your house after this. <coughs> oh. I know where you live, but yeah. So it's you guys, it's... sorry. Yeah, you live on Street Street, oh. one two three Street Street. I'm gonna see. You. But... Um, I got one more that's, of course, on this list that you so kindly provided. Um, Joe Hisaishi. Yes. The composer, one of the composers for Studio Ghibli. He has his hands on such works as My Neighbor Totoro, Howl's Moving Castle, Porco Rosso, and, of course, the opening track to Spirited Away, One Summer's Day, is his most famous and successful composition, with over 13 million streams on Spotify today. Ugh, that guy. like, And that's old, too. That's like 20 years old. So, like, that was a really good silent clap. Strange. Couldn't hear you. But, it wasn't like, silent, but it's fine. Oh, I can hear it. <laughs> Hell, going to kill you on the editing process. <laughs> it's fine. But no, that shout out to him, because he also did Valley of the Wind. So, Judgment. I haven't watched Valley of the Wind yet. But I've heard the do? OST. I know Zog is going to be mad about that. <laughs> I I don't care either way, but it's a, <laughs> it's a really good uh, movie. It's probably my favorite Ghibli movie, so I definitely recommend it. And yes, the soundtrack kicks ass. Yeah, it's it like, is amazing. I was listening to all the Ghibli soundtracks, and then I was like, I haven't watched Valley of the... Except Grave of the Fireflies. I don't touch anything to do with Grave of the Fireflies. Once was enough for me. But... Um, Fair, though. Yeah, I was like, no, this is like really banging. But okay, final final run. Does any does everybody have like their favorite anime OST? Like, let's start with you, Zog. What is your favorite anime OST, <laughs> or at least one of your favorites? I know how you I, like some in the top five. Honestly, uh, I don't really uh, <laughs> uh, hunt down specific. I'll hunt down specific tracks and whatnot. Uh, so I'll mostly hunt down like singles uh, to listen to over and over again, but I rarely ever like look up the whole soundtrack for a show. Uh, one show I have done that for though is Kill a Kill. And, fair, fair. Yeah, I can listen to that one all day, every day, nonstop. <laughs> it really good. In 2014, I would go around and I'd be like, I have to find my dad. And everybody would be like, oh my God. <laughs> I think I did that to you too. I think you, you secretly still hate It was me right that. before I had watched the show. But yes, you did. <laughs> it's so fun. I did that in public once. And they're like, are you lost? They thought I was like a 26-year-old special needs person. <laughs> but it's whatever. Publix. Okay. Uh, what about they're you, Joe? They're happy to help. Um, my favorite anime OST. Again, very difficult. No, um, like I said, it could be in your top five. It doesn't have to be like one of your favorites. No, uh, for, for me, it, the criteria I'm looking for is other than openings, other than individual songs that really stick out to me as like the shit. Um, which you know, uh, for for an example, would be like uh. Maho Shoujo Vac Machiavellianism. Um, Arm Girls Machiavellianism with okay. um, Shocking Blue, the intro. Yes. What an incredibly wild intro for what an incredibly wild anime. Uh, but the rest of the music doesn't really stick out to me in that. Uh, it shows that each song throughout the episode kind of stick with me. So, of course, um, we talked about this previously. Um, my opinion, not lining up with Zog's. Uh, shows like Naruto, like the original Naruto, knowing 
each track for each scene and like where they want me to be at and all of that music being like good and fun when they want it to be um that sticks with me uh same way with the sailor moon soundtrack um every single track is spin like used and meant to like invoke emotion fun happy sad spooky all of it i need it especially when you've got 40 episodes for me to watch i can't be paying attention for everything like these are cues to help me care about monster number 37 you know mm-hmm. yeah um, and so is this the sad backstory or happy backstory <laughs> It Why doesn't matter both? who it is, but I know it's sad. That's, <laughs> that's the real answer. Um, no one in Naruto had a happy backstory, except the third Hokage. Oh. Um, <laughs> excuse me? I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no, those kind of criteria. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's tough. Even though we've talked for... I talked to ad nauseum for 57 minutes. Uh, I still don't know. Um, Bleach. Bleach is in that same vibe for me. Great hits. Um, the songs are less uh, emotion evoking, but they are atmospheric. So when they want you to feel something, you know which song they're going to play for it. And it's like, okay, yeah, I get that weird. We're going to learn a lesson, and the lesson's spooky, and I might die, but like we're going to grow. <laughs> Yeah. training we're gonna grow from dying yeah as we all should uh, uh but no th- those are the things that stick out to me in osts for me i gotta go with fruits basket um 2019 of course that ost like if you completely strip all the intros and outros that's fine i still will rock with that ost um there is uh I can't remember the actress, like, it's super Japanese. I can't even pronounce it if I wanted to. But the scene where she's at the beach with Yuki in season two, you know, I'm talking about Kels. And, like, the scene where he also realizes what she is. And, like, that big, like, um, spring will come as well. Like, a spring day will come. Like, when everybody's having, like, their sad backstory. And then the whole Akito moments, what starts with, like, the shamisen hit. Like, those are just so, like, it's so... And it's so undeniably like Japanese. Like I can't mistake it for any other like place in the world. And it just does a really good like I can just close my eyes and I can like imagine being there, like in the situation like real life when I listen to OST. Which I never do because I listen to when I'm driving. If I close my eyes and imagine where I am, I'm in heaven. <laughs> so I could be anywhere in the next fifteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Close my eyes. It's reading rainbow. Like, <laughs> take a look. <laughs> reading You're rainbow. in heaven now. It's <laughs> my God. not the. Those were his final words before he slipped away in the coma. <laughs> but now he's but catching yeah. Pokemon. <laughs> no, I'm I'm Digimon all the way. If I get a oh, choice, okay. heaven is Digimon instead of Pokemon. Because anybody yes. gonna tell me I bred my freaking Eevee wrong? Like, when it's a freaking Eevee, like, mind yeah. your business. I agree. Like, can't breed Greymon wrong. All he breeds is destruction. But anyway. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but, you evolve and wrong, a Skull but... Greymon might have something to say about that. Yeah. That was a choice, and Ty made the correct choice for that time. I will stand by that. <laughs> like, they weren't going to do nothing. Metal Greymon only got electrocuted. Like, what do you mean? He can duck electricity. Skull Greymon? Bones. Hey. What about you? Okay. What about you, Kels? What was? Or sorry, I mean, now. Okay, yeah, I was like, I was like, he's you. skipping me on purpose because I ate a cookie. <laughs> yes, you deserve it. You deserve it. You should feel bad, and I will continue to <laughs> I was, give you shit. Like this man had had let me talk about nothing. <laughs> Go ahead. Whatever. Whatever. I, I want your wife. The only reason I'm letting you talk is because I want your wife to beat me up. <laughs> oh, okay. Which is real. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, ob- well, obviously, the only other soundtrack I've even mentioned uh, earlier in the show is Fairy Tale. I do believe, like, I've okay, I'm a sucker for like the Celtic y, like, Scottish, you know, music and like that, that whole soundtrack. Fantasy adventure is, kind of thing. Yeah, fantasy adventure. Uh, 
and I've never literally had one theme song be able to change ever so slightly to from like happy to like sad to make me cry. And it really just brings out the uh, if it's crazy that uh oh, I never played Sonic the Hedgehog here or there. <laughs> Sonic 06. <laughs> That had me happy to cry real fast. <laughs> You're crying for a completely different reason with that. Yeah. True facts, dog. True facts. Sonic uh, Hero. Oh, no. Th this is video it's, game OST. That's, uh, that's so, going to be a oh, we'll have to do this another episode. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Video game OSTs are coming, but strange. You <sighs> said fairy tale. Um, oh, just your like song. a lot of the themes. Yes, I did play fairy tale at my wedding. It was hype. It was actually very beautiful. Uh, Cried. Yeah. Because of fairy tale, not because of your wedding. Your feelings didn't matter. Oh, okay. Me. Like, it was the <laughs> I mean, I was crying for a different reason, but the the music kind of. I almost broke down like a baby when that <laughs> that song, as I had no idea. Uh, my wife totally picked it out on her own, uh, with the help from Static over here. <laughs> and I I almost I was almost a broken man before my wedding. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm I mean, super glad she was... told me because if she hadn't told me, if I didn't know what to expect, I would have cried. And it would have been so <laughs> horrible. You just hear it, like... in, hear it in the wild, like, oh God, <laughs> they caught me already. <laughs> You're like, oh no, is this my time? Is this my character moment? Or am I going to die? I don't know. Whichever <laughs> Is it raining no. outside? No, okay. Uh, it's... I'm not letting Kai, I'm not letting you near my playlist. For my <laughs> Why, bro? You don't want like Boogie Pop and friends playing when Sarah walks down the aisle. <laughs> yeah. oh, you want to say Okay, you know crystal? what? Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe no, no, you're on Titan. <laughs> Give me one song. When you get married, let me. It's gonna be congratulations. That's what it is. It's gonna be congratulations from Evangelion. I thought it was gonna be dance. congratulations from congratulations. Like... Oh my. Oh, by Post okay. Malone? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll do that too. No, yeah. no. That no. way Sarah's family can hate me. They'll be like, <laughs> who left the riff raff to play the rap music? Me. Um, <laughs> but no, so anime, anime OSTs are such a crucial part. Um, music, in general, a, a wonderful score is such a, a transformative uh, part of media of visual media that as Zog had, had said previously in the podcast that even in the silent day films you go to a movie it's not quiet because the score is so important just sitting there watching stuff without music without sound is boring so uh certainly osts are a valuable and critical part of uh of animation and that is why bunch of these composers have like 40 credits to their name because they're so important swano. and they're so unique <laughs> fucking swano again fuck yes swano we'll keep saying it we'll keep saying his name <laughs> that ass all right it's a wrap <laughs> it's a wrap um you can catch the podcast on all your podcasts talk to spotify itunes amazon podcast at constant breaker or on uh your everything else at Content Breaker too, gentlemen. Y'all have the stuff to plug. <laughs> uh, plug, you, plug, plug. I'm having you, an aneurysm, man. It's, it's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll like, why? You, uh, all right. Strangely entertaining. Watch. Tell me where to watch your shit. Uh, look for strangely entertaining, and apparently you have to tell YouTube that yes, I was looking for strangely entertaining and not strangely space entertaining. And you can find me on Twitter at strangely entertaining. Funnily enough, it's wow. coincidence actually. <laughs> static, how do we talk to you? You can find me at Static Dreads. Um, I do have dreads; they're under this bonnet. But <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> It's crucial, you know. It's we're, we're home, we're chilling. I feel it. Um, or you can catch me on uh, Twitch. We're live streaming dot hack every Wednesday, eight PM. We're playing through the original uh, PS2 franchise to really get a feel for what Doc Hat Sign is all about. Um, Zog, what are we talking about next week? Uh, actually, I had a question about that. Are we fighting? What's versus mean? <laughs> Um, no. 
me and Kells. Trying something new. Me and Kells are gonna uh, take two battering rams and <laughs> beat Strange for eating a cookie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> we planned this well in advance because we knew he was gonna eat a fucking cookie on this yes. podcast. I'll do um, it again. Nope. Someone's a goddamn psychic. I'll do it right now. So, um, what I think versus is, like, is this going to be, like, Goku versus, like, Sailor Moon? Don't Google that. No. Oh, oh God. No. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> FYE messed me up on that one. <laughs> um, find out next week here on Content Breaker. I know exactly what movie it is, too.